Hey guys, here we are looking at the electrophilic substitution of benzene. Now reaction mechanisms are really, really important. You have to be um, really careful about where you draw your arrows, where you draw your arrowheads, and where you draw your semicircles. Sometimes the drawings in this make people confuse electrophilic substitution with electrophilic addition because all of a sudden we go from benzene um, to having this hydrogen pop out up here and they think we've added this hydrogen in. It's not. It's just because we've actually been really, really epically lazy and not drawn in all of these hydrogens that we normally do. So don't be confused when this hydrogen pops up. Um, it's always there. It's not something that we've added in. If you know the general mechanism for the electrophilic substitution, most of the time you can work out the um, other mechanisms as well. So we are going to start off with our benzene. As I mentioned previously, you're going to get really, really good at drawing hexagons. And now because we have this positive thing adding in here, we are going to get our delocalized electrons coming up and being attracted to it. Now this attraction is going to break the delocalization in the middle. So we go to this like open positive semicircle. This hydrogen, which hasn't added, it's always been there, comes along. Um, and whatever we're adding in, the X goes in there. Now this electron, which is forming the um, hydrogen-benzene bond here, um, is much more attracted down to the middle, where the positive is. And then what's going to happen is that electron is going to reform the delocalization. We're going to have our X added in and then the hydrogen ion is going to go off and probably reform the catalyst or do something else. So that's the general mechanism. I'm now going to talk you through two more um, specific examples, but you should be able to recognize the similarities, the patterns between the general mechanism and the specific examples. So now we're looking at the nitration of benzene. Um, now there are two um, things that you need for the nitration of benzene. You are going to need nitric acid and you are going to need sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is just the catalyst here. Um, the nitric acid provides um, the bit that's being added on. Um, so again, we are going to start off with, oopsie, that's a very poor hexagon. Uh, we are going to start off with our benzene here, with our NO2 plus coming in. It is going to be attracted um, up to the nitrogen. We are going to get this broken circle formed hydrogen NO2. The electron in the hydrogen benzene bond is going to be attracted back down into the um, broken delocalization. That's going to reform the dilate, dilate delocalization, sorry, and then we have the nitration of benzene. Um, for lots of the current specification examples, this is a core practical, um, so it's well worth you knowing this mechanism really, really well. Um, the video I'm doing this week is pointing out lots of problems. Um, the video I'm doing on my classroom channel this week is pointing out lots of problems that students have in um, drawing this mechanism out in an exam. Loads and loads of silly mistakes that can lose you loads of marks. So if you want to go and check that out, I'll pop a link to it for you. The other specific example is a halogenation of benzene. Now, you can't just add in halogens. Um, don't particularly want to react with halogens because uh, benzene is so stable. So it's going to need a carrier iron. So if we're going to um, brominate, Um, then we are going to need a carrier, and that could be um, an aluminium carrier, or it can be an iron carrier. 
again what's going to happen is the uh, carrier is going to produce our um, positive iron. The electrons, the delocalized electrons are going to be attracted up to that. That is going to break the circle of delocalization. This um, electron here, which is involved in forming the bond with the hydrogen, is going to come back down here into the middle. It's going to reform the circle of delocalization. And then the hydrogen ion is going to go off um, by itself. So there you go, the general formula and two specific examples for you. As a teacher, when I see something like this, it makes me cry because it is so horrifically wrong, it's not going to get any marks in the exam. Now, it looks, on the face of it, it looks almost close to perfect. And it is close. It's just not close enough to get any marks. And at A-level, we are so, so harsh, so, so picky about what things will lose you marks, what things won't um, won't get you the marks, which things are wrong, which things are right. Um, so what I want you to do is to pause the video, um, try and find as many mistakes as you can in this, um, then I will come back and correct it so we're getting lots of marks. Okay, hopefully you have paused the video, um, found lots of mistakes. Um, I'll go through and correct this. Um, so first of all, we need our arrow going from our benzene to our nitrogen because that's the thing that's actually going to be corrected and it is NO2. Um, we need our bond here going to our nitrogen, not going to our oxygen because that is not the bit that is being um, bonded to. This circle here is way too big, it needs to be open and it needs to have a plus sign in it as well. Again, a circle here open needs to have a plus sign in it as well. This arrow here is in completely the wrong place. Um, let me just pop a little two there little two there while I'm remembering my twos. This arrow is in completely the wrong place. It needs to be going into the middle because that's where the electron's actually going. The electron is not going down here, it's going in here. So draw an arrow where the electron's actually going. Um, here again, the arrow needs to be towards the NO, um, N, not the O. We need to have H plus on the end there. Um, am I missing anything? Nope, I think, let me just make that a little plus. Um, those are enough mistakes to basically lose you all the marks on this question. So please don't make those mistakes because it will be a real shame to, you've basically learnt the mechanism but then lose mistakes because you were careless or you weren't thinking or you just drew your arrows too quickly. So it's really important we think about our mechanisms really carefully, really slowly and check we're doing enough to get all of the marks.